This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful website. Get 10% off your first purchase by going to squarespace.com slash pylinskitchen. So what dika, welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I am finally making a recipe that's possibly the most requested recipe of all time and I just haven't made it for various reasons. So I am making what's called pa thong go, which many call Thai donuts, but really they are the Thai version of Chinese donuts. So this is something that's a street food. You can find them usually only in the morning because it's a breakfast kind of thing and people buy them and eat them with sweetened condensed milk which is my favorite way or with a pandan coconut custard or with hot soy milk or with congee so it's a breakfast thing but this isn't something people make at home very much because to be honest with you it is not easy like it requires a lot of technique it requires practice um, to get it really really good like you can make some version of it but to make it perfect it requires a bit of technique so most people just buy it however since i'm far away from the source you most of you are far away from the source let's try to make it ourselves and i finally come up with a recipe that i'm so happy with it took me many tries and i think it's the simplest and i'm going to show you all the tricks and tips and technique to make sure that you are successful all right let's get started this is an extremely simple dough which actually means every single ingredient that you use is important. So I have some all-purpose flour here. I'm going to add some cornstarch and I'm going to sift the cornstarch in. So most recipes that you'll find in Thailand will just call for flour and no cornstarch, but I have found that the flour that they use in Thailand are low gluten flour for patongko. And the problem with patongko, if you have high gluten, it becomes really tough and really hard to work with. And it's not going to be puffy and airy because it's going to be a lot denser. So I find that cutting the cornstarch with a little bit of flour, no, cutting the flour with a little bit of cornstarch really makes a difference. So I'm just going to whisk that together well. And I sifted the cornstarch because sometimes cornstarch can get clumpy. And I am going to work this dough so little that I want to make sure the dry ingredients are well mixed so I don't get any uneven distribution of the cornstarch. Okay, that's it. The rest of our ingredients are very simple. I've got some water. To the water, I'm going to add a tablespoon of sugar. Make sure that's dissolved. And then I have some salt and I'm using fine table salt here. Okay, now that that's dissolved, this next ingredient is the key right here. And it is our leavening agent, ammonium carbonate, also known as baker's ammonia or baking ammonia. Now, before you ask me, I don't have it, what can I use instead? Just, just hold off. Let me explain why we're using it first. This is the classic stuff that if you buy patongko from a street vendor in Thailand, this is what they use. And they use this for a couple of reasons. One, it is a strong leavening agent that really gives a beautiful puffiness to this. It also makes things, the surface, a little extra crisp. And that crispness is why if you look at the box, a box of uh, crackers, you'll often find ammonium carbonate as one of the ingredients because it just has that ability to make things crisper that baking powder, baking soda doesn't do. Also, they use it because it doesn't leave any aftertaste whatsoever. If you did this recipe with baking powder, which you could, when you eat it, you will be able to taste the flavor of baking powder, which is not nice. And I've done it before. And as you can see, this dough is so simple and there's nothing to really hide it. So that's why people use something, a leavening agent that doesn't leave any aftertaste for best result. The problem with this is it's extremely pungent. So do not open this and smell it, just don't. I know some of you are gonna do it anyway, but you, I've been, you've been warned. Um, when you cook it, once it's all reacted, it'll all go away and it will leave no flavor. So that's why I wanna show you first this one that uses the classic ingredient. This is the traditional way they do it. It's all those, so the simplest and you can get this online. I got this in Vancouver at Gourmet Warehouse, uh, which is a store that sells a lot of specialty baking items. So it's not impossible to buy. I'll link to the Amazon link in the description as well. For substitute, hold off. I do not have a recipe that does not use ammonia just yet. Down the line, I will work on a recipe that doesn't use it. So don't ask me in the comment, what can you use instead? I don't have an answer yet. <laughs> but subscribe so you'll be notified when I do have one. Okay, 
That was a long thing, but it's very important. Now, I'm going to hold this away from me while I measure out a teaspoon into the water. And the good thing about ammonia is it does not activate until heat is applied. You can make the dough in advance and unlike baking powder and baking soda that, that starts working right away, this will just sit here until you apply heat to it. It's dissolved. I'm going to add just a couple teaspoons of oil to help tenderize the dough. Okay, and that's it. Now we're going to mix the two things together and the dough is done. Pour all of that in. I'm going to go in and mix it just until it comes together. I'm not, I'm using the word mix because I don't want you to knead because kneading will lead to gluten development, which will lead to a dough that is tough. And when a dough is tough, it cannot puff as much because the air doesn't have enough strength to blow it up. So you just want to mix it until all the flour is mixed in. Oh my God, I just got a whiff. Don't use a machine, just use your hand because the ma machine, it's really difficult to control when to stop. Okay, that's it. That's it. It doesn't look like it's well mixed at all. But trust me, it will be because what we're going to do next is we're going to let it sit for about three, for, for three hours. I haven't tried anything less. Two will probably be okay. And while it's resting, the water is going to evenly distribute itself. The gluten is going to develop in itself and it'll have time to then relax and everything when we come back to it, like magic, the dough will be smooth, okay? You wanna cover it so it doesn't dry out and um, you can do this in the morning and let it sit throughout the day if you want. The Patongko vendors in Thailand, they just have the dough sitting out and you know sell it over the period of several hours. So you can definitely um, let it sit for a long time. It's not yeast, so it's you don't have to worry about it over proofing, over rising. Again, the great thing about working with ammonia, it's just gonna sit there until you fry it. But you wanna fry it when you're ready to eat it. Okay. Before we get cooking, let me tell you more about today's sponsor. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence, whether it's a website, an online shop, or a portfolio. You can get your domain, build your website, and host it all in one place. And most importantly, you don't need to know how to code at all. They make it really easy for anyone to use. My husband is a graphic designer, as many of you know, and he could have designed his own website, but he used Squarespace for his portfolio because it's so easy, so convenient, and all of their templates look professional and beautiful. Now, the best part, my viewers can get a free trial by heading over to squarespace.com slash pylinskitchen. And when you are ready to launch, you can use the offer code pylinskitchen for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And I will link to everything in the description below. Okay. Ta-da! Now I know what you're thinking. Pylin, that looks just as crappy as it did when you first left it. <laughs> Trust me, something has happened. Yes, if it looks exactly the same, it's fine. Um, it has only been two and a half hours. I, I told you three, but I'm in a rush. Baby is waiting, so we're going to do that two and a half and we'll find out what happens. So the oil, you want it to be at 375, no less. Well, you can go down to 360, but try not to let it dip to 350 because it really does make a difference. And you want to also make sure that you cook off all that ammonia. So if you fry them at a lower temperature, you might be tricked into thinking that it's done because, you know, it's golden on the outside then you pull it out and in fact it's still a little doughy on the inside so if you let your oil drop add a little extra time for frying okay all right so now with our work surface so that dough is quite wet but because it's quite wet you want to make sure your board is pretty thoroughly floured turn this out oh, wow that's heating my it's like burning my arm hair off um okay come come see this in this bowl here i want you to see so even though it looks really rough on the surface, you can see that it's really smooth on the inside now. That's the work that was happening. See that? There we go. And it's gonna wanna stick to your hands. That's fine. It's supposed to be a sticky dough. Whew, you can smell that ammonia. And dust, 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 dust the top. And then you wanna pat this down. Don't knead it. Again, you wanna work this as little as possible. Just pat it down into a rectangle. You want it to be about a quarter inch thick. 
And you want the sides as straight as you can so you don't waste as much, so you get nice squared pieces. So what I'm looking for is not so much how long it is, but how thick it is, because I want to be able to get three strips about two to three inches. And I'm only going to work with one at a time. So let these rest and cover them in some moist towel, not wet, so they don't dry out. And then with this one, we're going to form. Okay, this is like my ugliest piece. I'm going to trim off the ends. You fry that up, it's just not going to be pretty. And then with each piece, you want to get it about an inch thick. Okay, the last one's going to be a little bit fat. That's okay. The way these are shaped is they're actually two pieces stuck together in the middle. So when they fry up, it's like a chromosome, two, two, piece, two sticks, sticks stuck together in the middle. And the way you stick them is you use a little bit of water, and I'm just using a little baby uh, chopstick here to put a little line of water on every other piece. I think I might have an odd number here. That's okay. So put this one then that's dry on top of the one that's wet and you press it just gently so they stick. Same thing with these other pieces. And then when I have this last one, I just grab my... Sometimes it works out so you don't have, you know, odd numbers, but there we go. That's good enough. There we go. And that's it. Now they're ready to go into the fryer. So now I'm just waiting for my oil. If there's a lot of excess flour, uh, you can brush it off, or if it's just you, you can blow it off. But what you don't want is too much flour that'll linger at the bottom of the pot because that will kill your oil faster. So it's not a big deal if you don't have a lot to fry, but if you do, your oil will last longer. Before you drop, you wanna give it a stretch. So it's about double the length it was, then you drop it. And you wanna stretch just before you drop because otherwise it'll spring back here. Stretch it about this much and then immediately into the oil. And now just watch the magic happen. Look how much they're fluffing, puffing. Woohoo! And they'll sink in the fur at first. And then you want to flip them often. so that they heat evenly. Yes, you see how much that puffs? One side always looks better than the other side, so don't worry if they don't look all the same. That's what you want. That's the ammonia doing the work right there. Nice and puffy and golden. I think I can fit in one more piece. Oh yes. Now, you want these to be in the oil for a minimum of five minutes. And I say minimum because I find that anything less the ammonia has not had time to cook through, therefore you're still going to smell it a little bit. And I find that five, six minutes um, at 375, so if your oil dropped too low, make sure you add a little bit of time. Uh, five, six minutes, you're good. So go and flip them often. Oh yes. And if you're wondering, do you have to fry them together? Like, do you have to have two sides stuck together? Yes, you know why? Because if you don't, it is impossible to turn a round log in the oil. This is not aesthetics, this is practicality right here. <laughs> yeah, I would say one biggest mistake that people make with these is they knead the hell out of the dough. In the, in the ones that I failed, years ago I tried making these and they didn't work out and they always come out looking okay, but when you eat them they're like, oh, they're like tough and chewy and not airy and hollow, you want them to be kind of hollow, and it's because you over -need them. Another sign that they are close to being done is the bubbles will start to subside, because bubbling is basically water escaping the dough, and the less water there is, the more crispy the exterior is. Okay, it's been about five minutes. I've got a nice golden brown color here. Um, also, you see how still that one is? That's what you're going for, because that means that the outside is crispy and then onto paper towel to absorb excess oil, which trust me, there is excess oil to be absorbed. This one got ugly. 
<laughs> not sure what, not sure what happened here. Was, oh no, these came apart. Oh, that's a good teachable moment. See this one? I'm trying to turn it and it just like keeps wanting to roll back. Help me out here. Come on, stay. Damn it. This is why you stick them together. Hashtag teachable moment. Yes. Ooh, donut balloon. Look at these. Oh my God, if this is not perfect. I don't know what is. So don't let these fool you. I have set aside the rejects in a separate bowl so I can snack on them before the party. So this, <laughs> this is just like end pieces or like that one that's split apart, like this mini one, you know, like that's, that's for you. Okay, some of them will turn out like the perfect H, sometimes K, and then others are just a little more wonky. Now I want to show you, which one should I show you? I want to save the nice ones for the photos, but uh, see how crispy, see? And that's long frying, waiting for things to, waiting for the bubbles to subside. And the ammonia really does help with this. Look, oh, hello. That's what you want. If you open it up and it's like dense dough, that's not good. You want hollow so you can then dip these in condensed milk, soy milk here. Ah, hot. See this? That's what you're looking for. But when you do get to the meat, like to this dough, it's still tender. See? It's still nice and tender. That's the perfect batonko right there. So you can dip it in condensed milk, which is the easiest. The other thing that we always dip it in is um, sangkaya or pandan coconut custard, which I have a recipe for and I will link to that below. Or sometimes just a glass of fresh soy milk. And this isn't silk. Okay, this is not like the dairy substitute soy beverage that you can find at the grocery store. This is real, pure soy milk. You can get them at Asian grocery store or you can make them yourself. I have a recipe for that as well. Mm. Time to dip. Oh, and another thing really important to check on before you eat, smell it. Do you smell any more ammonia? Nope, nothing. That means you cook that perfectly. Mm. Mm. So good, so good. I'm telling you. Even in Thailand, it's not easy to find a really, really good batonko. Mm. Like, sometimes they're not hollow enough. That's a lot actually, like ones that are too dense, ones that are too chewy. Because it's actually easier to over knead than it is to under knead. You get ones that are not crispy or the flavor of the dough isn't perfect, like it's not salty enough or it's not, it's too sweet or whatever. Like there's, there's so, it's such a simple dough, but there's so many little details that even in Thailand, you know, I buy patanko and like nine times out of 10, it's not like, oh my God, this is so good. But trust me, I worked on this so many times because I thought if I'm gonna give you a recipe, it's gonna be, as far as I'm concerned, perfect. And I really, really think that these are. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com and if you make it, you can send me a photo by tagging me on Instagram, on Twitter, or post it to my Facebook page. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an episode and click the bell icon as well so you get a no no notification when I post a new video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.